So our topic tonight is about the great traveler. And this led us to Gog and Magog. And only a prophet would know about Gog and Magog. Ya'jud and Ma'jud. Nabi Muhammad was long was sitting amongst his companions. No, sorry. He, he passed by and they were, he found them talking amongst themselves. When he asked, what are you talking about? And they said, we're talking about the signs of the last day. And then he said the last day would not come. And then he mentioned ten. But these ten are not given in the chronological sequence in which they will occur. Number one, the child. Number two, Gog and Magog. Number three, the return of the son of Mary. Number four, Dukhan, or smoke. Number five, Dab Batul Ar. Number six, that the sun would rise from the west. Number seven, eight, and nine, three earthquakes. One in the east, one in the west, and one in Arabia. And number ten, that the fire will come out of Yemen and drive people to their place of assembly. So we know that Gog and Magog is one of the major signs of the last day. The major signs of the last day. And if you want to get knowledge about the signs of the last day, where do you go to first of all? You go to the Quran. If you want to have knowledge about Gog and Magog, where do you go to first? Do you go to the Hadith first or do you go to the Quran? You go first to the Quran. That's where you go for knowledge. When you go to the Quran, you mustn't go as a schoolboy. Allah didn't send down this Quran to be studied by schoolboys. He sent down this Quran for a people who think يتفكرون, and he just taught a methodology for study of the Quran. So you don't take any one verse of the Quran in isolation and come to a conclusion pursuing to knowledge. No. You have to go to the totality of the book. Get all the data on that subject. And since the Quran is non-contradictory, it does not contradict itself. So you have to bring all the data in the Quran together, integrated as a harmonious whole. And for that you need more than the rational faculty. You need to see with not only these eyes, but you also need to see with the internal eye. The internal eye would not see without Noor, and Noor is not sold in the supermarket. And when you have that proper methodology, and you've understood the subject from the Quran, then you go to the Hadith. When we go to the Quran to study the subject of Gog and Magog, we find only two references in the Quran, only two. So it should not be difficult. The first reference, of course, is in Surah al Kaf. <laughs> the second is in Surah al Anbiya. The second one says, "Ba'adu billahi min shaitan rajim, wa haramun ala qariyatin ahlaknaha." Allah speaks of a town which He destroyed, and having destroyed the town, He expelled the people of the town. And then placed a ban on them, Annahum la yarji'oon, that they can never return to reclaim this town as their own. You can come back as tourists, okay, but you cannot return to reclaim this town as your own. Either futi had ya'juj wa ma'juj, until Gog and Magog are released. Wa humin kulli hadabin yamsilun, and they spread out all over the world. Only then, would these people be brought back to this town to reclaim it as their own? So which town is it? Twenty years ago I argued the case that the town is Jerusalem. And that when the Jews are brought back to Jerusalem, two thousand years after they had been expelled, and after living in exile for two thousand years, when the Jews are brought back to Jerusalem, the Quran must explain that because Allah says he sent the Quran to explain all things. So we have an explanation that this is Gog and Magog bringing them back to the Holy Land. Who brought the Jews back to the Holy Land to reclaim it as their own? Understand? Who is it? Modern Western civilization. And so Gog and Magog are located within modern Western civilization. I have not said that modern Western civilization is Gog and Magog. Did I say that? No. I said Gog and Magog are located within modern Western civilization. So now let's go to Surah so Al-Kaf. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is answering the question about the great traveler. And he repeats the question, And they question me about someone who is known as Dhul That's not his name. He's known as 
زود کرنے ان کرم کن مین اے ہون ان کرم کن مین اے جنریشن اے پیپل این ای پاک این ایج سو وچ ون از ایٹ دا پوزیسر آف ٹو ہونس اور سم ون ول امپیکٹ آن ٹو ایجز وچ ون از ایٹ پراپر میتھالوجی سنس دس از لوکیٹڈ ان دا قرآن لیٹس گو ٹو دا قرآن لیٹ دا قرآن آنسر دا کوشچن اینڈ وین وی گو ٹو دا قرآن وی فائنڈ دیٹ اللہ ہیز آلویز یوز دا ورڈ کم ٹو مین اے جنریشن an age, an epoch, and has never used the word karm to mean horn. So the answer is Zulkarnain is not one with two horns. Zulkarnain is one who impacts on two ages, two peoples. He is someone who possesses faith, faith in Allah. But in addition to that, Allah has bestowed upon him power. And with that power, he can pursue whatsoever objective he chooses to pursue. And so now, he travels in the direction of the setting of the sun, so he's going west. This is the first journey. And the second journey, the rising of the sun, so he's going east. And he comes to a body of water, so he cannot go any further. If there is a body of water stopping him on this side, and if he travels to the two ends of the land, then there must be a body of water on that side stopping him as well. So we're looking now geographically for a strip of land, one end of which ends with water, and the second end of which ends in water to the east and to the west. When he reaches to the end of the land where the water is, the setting of the sun, he comes across a body of water which is hamia, meaning visibility is very shallow. So it is dark and murky. When he travels to the other end, it has to be another body of water. And then he goes on a third journey. And on that third journey, he goes to a pass between the mountain ranges. So from this body of water to that body of water is a solid range of mountains. And in between there is a pass. And that's the direction of his third journey where he encounters Gog and Magog. But when Allah releases Gog and Magog, The Prophet said, the first of them will pass by the Sea of Galilee on their way to Jerusalem. If you're going to pass by the Sea of Galilee on the way to Jerusalem, you've got to come from the north. The commentators of the Quran did geography. Ibn Kathir did geography. And they came to the conclusion that that body of water, which was dark and murky, was the Black Sea. So we're now in a geographical region with which we are now comfortable. This is the Black Sea, and that is the Caspian Sea. And in between are the Caucasus Mountains. And there's only one pass in the Caucasus Mountains, only one. And it's called the Dariel Gorge. So the first journey is towards the Black Sea. And in the region of the Black Sea, power now rests on the foundations of faith. This is the first column. And the second time around, power will once again rest on the foundations of faith in the region of the Black Sea. And then he traveled in the opposite direction. This is now east. And now he travels on a third journey. And it is when he traveled in the, in the third direction to the pass between the mountains. The Quran gives an exact geographical description of the pass. He calls it Baina Saddain. It is in the shape of a shell, a shell that is open. And up to today you can see the photographs. It is exactly like that as an open <coughs> shell, the Gabriel Gorge. There he came across a people La Yakaduna Yafkahuna Kaula, whose language he could not understand because their language was unique. It was unrelated to any of the regional languages. So we're looking now for a unique language at that area where there's a pass between the mountain ranges, and that is precisely the Georgian language up to this day, unrelated to the languages of the region. When they were able to communicate with each other, then those people said to him, Inna ya'juja wa ma'juja mufsiduna filak, Bigag and Magag are committing facade in our territory. We are prepared to pay you. If you can do something to protect us, can you build a barrier? Oh, but Zulkarnain has been given the power 
to pursue whatever objective he chose to pursue. And Zulkarnain used his power to punish the oppressor. And Yajuj and Majuj are human beings because their conduct is wicked. Can they be angels? Oh no. <laughs> angels they only do whatever Allah orders them to do. So they cannot be angels. Can they be jinn? No, because when he built the barrier, they could not pass. A jinn could pass through. So God and Magad have to be human beings. Only human beings can have a conduct, which is described as wicked. And if they are evil in their conduct, he has the power to beat them up. So how does he respond? He should have said, I don't need your money. I don't need to build any barrier or board. I'll just go and beat them up and give up. Teach them the lesson of their lives. He doesn't do that. No. He agrees to build the barrier. But they said a sad and he said radam. They said a barrier, he said a dam, in the shape of a dam. Why does he do that? Because Nabi Muhammad Islam explained in the hadith that uh, Gog is an ummah banu Adam. And Ya'juj is an Ummah Banu Adam and Ma'juj is a Bani Adam, Banu Adam. And Allah has created creatures of His so powerful that none but He can destroy them. This is the Hadith of Qudsi, Sahih Muslim. So even Zulkarnin cannot destroy Gog and Magar. In the language of chess, He can checkmate them. And that's what He proceeded to do. The first time around, He said, Give me blocks of iron. And then with the blocks of iron, he blocked the passageway, so he made like a dam, exactly the shape of a dam. And then he said, give me molten copper, blow with your bellows. And then he poured the molten copper upon the iron. And then he said, the rahmat of Rabbi. This is rahma from my Rabbi. فَإِذَا جَاءَ وَعَدُ رَبِّي جَعَلَهُ دَكَّةً وَكَانَ وَعَدُ رَبِّي حَقَّةً But when that time comes of which my Lord has won, he's going to bring down this barrier made of blocks of iron in the path between two mountains. And when he brings down this barrier, then Gog and Magog will be raised. After they have been released, then obviously the second of the two currents would be possible. The first was before he built the barrier. And the second will be sometime after he built the barrier. Is the barrier still up? If the barrier was up, up to this day, surely someone would have found it. Where is it? No one has ever seen that barrier. Why? Nabi Muhammad is asleep at the home of his wife Zainab. And in his sleep, he had a vision. Like Suleiman had a vision. Like Ibrahim had a vision. Like Nabi Muhammad had a vision. And he sees something terrible. And he wakes up and his face is flushed all red. And he wakes up saying, Wailul is Arab, woe unto the Arabs, min sharrin qadik tarabak. Because of a great evil which should now come upon them, it's close, the Arabs in particular. And then he raised his hands like this and he said, Today a hole has been made in the barrier, the Radam, built by Sulkane, indicating that the release of Ya'juj and Ma'juj will commence at this time. She asked, Will we be destroyed? Will we be destroyed? Even, they are, even though there are righteous people amongst us? He said, Naam. Ida kathurath. Ida kathurath khabas. He says, when garbage prevails, then look for the destruction of the Arabs. Today there is even garbage in the money we are using. There is rubbish in the market, the economy. There is rubbish in the monetary system. There is rubbish in the feminist revolution. There is rubbish everywhere. So he said, either keth or al khabas. When rubbish prevails everywhere, at that time, look for the destruction of the Arabs. When Nabi Isa alayhi salam returns, then Allah says, this is a hadith, al Qudsi, that Gog and Magog will be sent, not released. And the first of them will pass by the Sea of Galilee and start to drink the water, meaning consume the water. But by the time the last of them pass, they will say there used to be water here. Indicating that the water level in the Sea of Galilee gives us a timeline for the approach of the return of Nabi Isa alayhi salam. When Nabi Isa alayhi salam returns, the first thing that he will do will be to kill Dajjal, the Jasad. And when he is killed, and of course the jinn no longer work for him, that's goodbye to the state of Israel. And then, 
Gog and Magog will attack Nabi Isa alayhi salam. And he will then pray to Allah who will then destroy them. And when Gog and Magog are destroyed and Dajjal is killed, it will be a level battlefield now. The odds are no longer with them. And at this time, the Tukatilun al Yahud, you will most certainly cite the Jews. He's not speaking about a Nasara now, not speaking about the Christians. You, the followers, this Ummah, you will fight the Jews. And you will defeat them. At that time, even the rocks and the stones will speak. This is the end of Dal and Magar. Those who use wrong methodology, they looked at only one hadith and they ignored the Quran. And that is disrespect for the Book of Allah. And they said that this hadith says that Gog and Magog will be sent and the youth sent to mean release after Nabi Isa Islam returns. And therefore there will be no Gog and Magog in the world until Jesus returns. What a mistake they have made. What an embarrassment for them when they are in their graves. We pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala might bless us to always recognize the truth. And when we recognize the truth to stand up for it. Regardless of the price we have to pay. And give us eyes to see that which is false. And when we recognize it as false, to have the courage and integrity to declare it to be false and to stand up against it.